see why I'm letting know It's the inspirational power You are listening to the Inspirational Power Hour podcast with your host, Chandra Wise. Welcome to this week's episode. So, guys, I am talking to songwriter, singer, recording artist PJ Morton. He's talking about his latest album, which is a gospel album, Gospel According to PJ. And we got the behind the scenes on that. It's going to be good. You don't want to miss it. As always, make sure to follow online on Instagram, follow at Chandra Wise, on Twitter at Chandra Wise, and on Facebook, make sure to like the Inspirational Power Hour fan page. All right, guys, let's get right into this episode. It's the Inspirational Power Hour. Listen, today, if you know me, you already know that I'm over here too excited to sit still. Guys, because I am talking to, I call, I always say this, he's one of the most um, gifted creatives in the world, and he is here talking about his brand new album, The Gospel According to PJ. I'm talking about none other than PJ Morton. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Listen, PJ, you got to know how excited I am, right? Uh, uh, you, listen, you always show love, so uh, I, I, I'm not surprised that you uh that you're with me and, and, and excited today because you you always show me love. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh, so much to talk about and to unpack, you know, regarding this project, Gospel According to PJ. This is your first gospel album. That's right, yeah, yeah. So yeah. so, so let's, let's, let's just jump right into this. Tell us what, tell us all about this and how you birthed the concept for this. We know that this is no surprise considering your roots, but how did you know it was mm-hmm. time to present this gospel album? Yeah, well, um, people have asked me to do a gospel album for many years, of course, based on my, uh, my history, and I never quite felt um, led to do that. You know, I felt like my purpose was, was, was different in mm-hmm. the sense of um, bridging the gap and giving people love songs that they could feel proud about and they could listen to with their kids or listen to with their families, just good, good songs that I think are underrepresented. Um, and you know, uh, but I've always had my hand in gospel music. I never really stopped, um, uh, all the way from the beginning to songs like let go that I've written, um, to, uh, gotta have you with Jonathan McReynolds or over and over with, uh, Trinity, with Trinity five, seven. Um, it's always, it's always been there for me. Um, and I just felt like now it was a full circle moment now mm. that I've had some success um, in my initial purpose, R&B music, you know, won a couple Grammys. And um, and, I, and this pandemic really made me feel like um, people need the music of inspiration, uh, the music of hope. Um, and that's gospel music. They need that now more than ever. So I decided to uh, put together a lot of the songs that I've worked on in the past and some new songs, like All in His Plan, and really kind of tell my story through gospel music. And uh, so I'm, I'm just so excited about it. Uh, I can't wait for people to hear it. And so, PJ, listen, I was I, I was listening to it early today. Now, you, you made this statement. This really is like a full circle moment. And for me, mm-hmm. it really feels like that, too. Um, yeah. Because, and, and I, you know, I, I always have a backstory about everything. Um, I love it. <laughs> I remember the first time I met your dad, he was here in Jackson and he was preaching at a church. Um, you know, David Curry from the Mississippi mass, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. His brother's church. He was here preaching my freshman year in college, how long ago it was, but, um, <laughs> met your dad. He preached this sermon. And I remember this sermon. He preached, uh, what's in your hand. And I, and w- yeah. with what I was going through at that time, that was a pivotal moment for me in my life. And so yeah. even just thinking about, you know, meeting your dad, him being that impactful, and then me being introduced to you and your creativity and watching your journey through the years. And when I was listening to the album, those conversations with your dad, where yeah. you guys grew up, him being in gospel music, all of those influences, it really created the perfect storm to create a P.J. Morton, I think. Yeah, I think so. And I, I never really looked at it that way. You know, I uh, I had these songs and then I had all these artists, but I said, man, I, I want people to, I want it to be more than just the album. I want people to get to know me a little better. And I think the conversations between me and my dad really bring some, it really brought some clarity to who I am and how I've 
come to be the person I was in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, uh, that that's why I, I love this album on a lot of levels. Of course, the music, of course, the artists that I have on it, but really the story that I'm trying to tell, um, which <laughs> it's almost like the prodigal son, you yeah. know, or something. Uh, it, it's just a story of, a you know, a father and a son who had been there for each other regardless and um and and still here for this journey you know so it's it's super special to me you you were no prodigal son pj you were not there living it up too hard i don't think it, no i wasn't that's what i'm saying <laughs> that's why i said kind of yeah kind <laughs> of kind of okay. I, I i never you know i'm happy you said that because what i'm really trying to normalize now mm. is for people to understand that they can um, write a gospel album or release a gospel album mm-hmm. and also release these love songs. I'm I'm not, I didn't have to become somebody different to do this album. You know, I didn't have to put on a different hat. I'm still the same person um, who can love people and also love God, you know. And um, I think that's what this is all about for me. It's really not the prodigal son. It's that we've been walking together this whole time. Absolutely. And, you know, I was thinking about it earlier today. And one of the things that you've been able to accomplish is that you 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 brought a level of open mindedness. I don't even know if that's a word, but a level of open mindedness (laughs) to the church community. And you you really you gently forced a redefining of secular music to Christians. I don't do you realize that? Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, not at the time. No, I just was doing what I felt uh, was right. And, uh, but when I look over time, uh, that's kind of what happened a little bit. It, it let people understand, okay, well, all of this music just can't be wrong. And, and, yeah. uh, if we're living life and experiencing life, there can't be something wrong with writing songs about those experiences. Absolutely. And, um, I think I just made it a little clearer. I think people who came before me in this same fight, um, were more frustrated and really couldn't. Uh, they didn't have the patience to try to explain in a way that made it clear. And I think um, that was a gift that was given to me where I was able to make it a little clearer. And, um, and uh, you know, now we're, we're in a different place altogether, I think, a lot more open. Um, I know I play, I, I, I play my concerts at some churches sometimes <laughs> um, because people have grown and, and understood that it's all God's music, you know, and that God is love. Absolutely. So, guys, the Gospel According to PJ, this is an incredible album. You have some amazing features on here, PJ. Tell us about it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, that, that that became the fun part for me because in uh, reimagining some of these songs that I've done in the past and writing some new ones, I, I wanted to pick the perfect artist that I felt fit, you know, or artists that... Um, uh, like really influenced me like commission and the Clark sisters, that early stuff um, and relationships like me and Yolanda Adams, who were literally watched me grow up, you know? Um, and uh, I mean, Tasha, Tasha Cobbs Leonard, who is, uh, you know, we've been knowing each other since freshman year in college. We were, mm. uh, I was the musician for the church, uh, for the college choir. She was in the college choir. Wow. Um, of course, uh, Daryl Walls and, the Cardi Cortez, two of the best male vocalists in the world. Uh, Kirk Franklin's on the album. Who did I miss? Jay Moss, Kim Burrell, uh, the Clark Smokey Sisters. Norfolk. Smokey, yeah. uh, just, just, uh, just, just a strong list of people who I've, I've been fans of for years, and this kind of gave me an excuse to, to call everybody <laughs> for, for, my, for my first gospel record. So, yeah, it's been, that, was, that was the fun part for me. So now you've been working on this a minute, and, and quite a bit of this was done during the quarantine, right? Yeah, majority of it. Um, thankfully, I mean, we were right right before we went into quarantine, I had sessions set up, sessions that we had actually had to cancel. I remember Tasha and Travis, uh, we had that session set up and uh, the Walls group at that time. Um, uh, we had some music recorded before. Uh, but majority was was right here in the quarantine over Zoom and audio mover that we used for the uh, for the studio. Uh, it, it was a challenge, but I think the blessing in all of it was that everybody was home. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Everybody was home, and I could get them in the studio. Uh, having all of these artists with their schedules traveling and all of that, I don't know that it could have happened, you know, mm. this quickly um, had we not been in the pandemic. So that was one of the bright sides of us being. Uh, on lockdown 
And speaking of the pandemic in the midst of COVID in pure PJ fashion, you, you managed to find a creative space with your new digital game show, the culture trivia show. <laughs> tell us yeah. about that. Yeah. So tell us about that. Oh, oh, well the culture trivia. Yeah. It came uh, d- during the pandemic. Um, I was really wanting a break from music, to be honest. That's where it came from initially. I wanted to do something else. I wanted to give people something else. I felt like there was an overload of music of some sorts right when we went into the pandemic. Yeah. And um, I, I just wanted to try something else, give a, a, an escape, you know, a release. And, uh, man, it just started to blow up. And uh, we've had so many amazing guests. Uh, we have the, the finale coming with Jill Scott and uh, Tika Sumter and Miguel. Uh, and we've had so many amazing um, guests uh, on there before and who knew who knew that I would would come out of the pandemic with a game show but right. I'm I'm, I, I'm happy it's so much fun and uh, I want to keep it going absolutely uh, so we'll see all right guys again I'm talking to PJ Morton we're talking about his latest album gospel album gospel according to PJ and yes. it's going to be available when PJ August 28th it will be available I just announced we're doing um, we're doing a uh, listening party on Instagram on uh, the Thursday night, the 27th, um, at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to listen to the record. I'm going to talk to some of the guests from the album, um, and we're just going to hang out. It's, it's just going to be a good time, and uh, I, 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 uh, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in there with me. Now, being the fact that this is your first gospel album, I'm always intrigued by this, the way you know producers approach what they're doing um, mm-hmm. Did you have to approach this differently than you've done your other music in the past? Uh, like in, in what way you mean? In, in the way of, of production and, and different things like that. Uh, well, the type of producer I am is, you know, uh, it's whatever the song needs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like a producer is supposed to be a very unselfish place. Uh, if I'm writing a song and producing a song for some other artist, I try to put myself in their shoes. And that's kind of what I did with this. Each artist that I picked for the song, I I tried to uh, create uh, a soundscape that would fit them, you know. Uh, Of course, me, fit me, but like fit them more than me. Right. And uh, that's how I approach any record, to be honest with you. So um, it wasn't very different um, this time around. I I was the same producer that I usually am, just, uh, just in a different way. All right, listen, guys, before we go, we're going to take a listen to, uh, I think, maybe your latest single, So In Love. Is that what you want to hear, PJ? Yeah, let's do it. Let's All do right. it, So In Love, featuring Daryl Walls and Zaccardi Cortez. All right, before we do that, PJ, I want to, I want to. this is the last question I have for you. Now, you, you all, okay. you're always so gracious about the fact that, you know, your name and your dad's name will forever be, uh, it will forever occupy the same space and sometimes the same conversations. I want to play something for you real quick. I interviewed your dad a couple years ago, a couple times, and he had this to say for you. So t- take a listen to this. Okay. Yes, that was so exciting. You know, my son is so gifted. And now it's not playing. I'm trying to produce myself, PJ, and I, th- I think I tore it up. Hold on. All good. All right. So it's not playing. Hold on. But this is what he had to say. I, I it was it during that bit. year when the both of you guys were um, – were nominated for a Grammy the same year, and that was a history-making year. And was, um, he yeah. just talked about how incredibly proud he was as a father, even with you blazing your own path and your own trail, and how proud he was to occupy that same space. Yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing. I remember that year. It hadn't been done in 15 years since uh, Bob Dylan and Jacob Dylan. Uh, and so we were proud. We were happy that we both lost, <laughs> but we had a good time together just being in that space. And, um, you know, I feel like my, my father, uh, I, it makes me so proud. And also it's, it, it single-handedly like put me, um, in position to be successful. I mean, he really did all he could and, and, and paid attention as much as he could. He saw some things before I did as far as me being, a singer, you know, I didn't want to sing before. He kind of forced me to sing a little bit. I was writing and playing keys, but he was like, you got a voice, son. You know, it encouraged me more than like pushed me. And um, I'm just so grateful. Bought bought me my first keyboards, bought me my, I mean, he always put me in the position to, uh, to be successful at whatever I wanted to do. So I'm just so grateful for my, for my dad. And, um, 
and uh, you know he's still he's still my number one, he's still my number one supporter. Absolutely. So thanks so much, PJ, for stopping by and hanging out as always. Of course, of course. Thank you for having me as usual. All right, guys, it's time for us to get ready and to get out of here for this week. Thank you so much for allowing me to spend a part of your day with you. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you guys have been uplifted and encouraged. I want to say a very special thank you to Kelante Gavin. Make sure that you check out his latest single, Hold Me Close. It's going to be available everywhere August 28th. The full-length album is coming soon, also August 28th. August 28th. Make sure you check out PJ Morton's gospel album it's the inspirational power 